Hey guys, it's Stas from Stas Brewing. How are you doing? It's late on Saturday night. I've just come back from an evening at Dermot's place uh, where we sampled our pulp fan fiction, our Grainfather vs. Robo Brew, Brew Off. Uh, so, oh, if you want to look at the actual brew day, you can find it there. Um, yeah, so it's a bit of a... Uh, it was, I was expecting it to be uh, fairly, fairly short comparison. But uh, sort of evolved into a more of a long format conversation about homebrew in general. Um, we we had a bit of a uh, issue with the camera focus, uh, so it goes out of focus for a while. Um, then I realised it was out of focus, so we retook some more footage, which then went to a longer form conversation. But uh, I I had I had a lot of fun chatting with Dermot, and uh, so I, I thought I'd include it all. So if you if you're into long format videos and you wanna wanna tune in and watch us sort of shoot the breeze about home brewing, go grab a beer and uh, sit down and uh, enjoy the video. If if you don't like long format videos, then uh, this video may not be for you. But I'm gonna put it up anyway. So uh, hope you enjoy. Sit down, relax, have a beer, and enjoy. <music> All right, uh, hey guys, we're here. We're here to do the taste test side by side of the uh, pulp fan fiction which we brewed. Oh, it feels like ages ago. It does. It was a while ago, wasn't it? It was late was October, wasn't it? Late October. We're now yeah. sort of the week before Christmas. Yeah. All through the house. Yeah, yeah. We can uh, smell the, the the Christmas tree in the yeah. corner, and uh, you know the nine sleeps. I think it is. <laughs> right, only four sleeps till I move. <laughs> yes, congratulations. Up to Brewcastle. Yeah, up to yeah. Brewcastle, that's right. Good luck with that shift. Yeah, so we've got our two beers here. This is mine, which mm -hmm. has been in the keg for probably six weeks, yes. I reckon. Yeah. Um, bottled straight off the keg, and yours has only been in bottle for about ten days. That's right, that's right. yeah, bottled actually last weekend, last Saturday, so seven days in bottle. Okay. Yeah, so I was a lot late <coughs> with being out of town for a couple of weeks and that sort of thing, so it'll be interesting. And no um, uh, temperature control on the fermentation yeah. while I'm just stuck it under the stairs of the warehouse, so. Yeah, mine was, mine was sitting about 19 degrees the Perfect. whole time. Perfect, so good philosophy experiment right there, yeah. <laughs> the effect of temperature control. Alright, well do you want to crack into it? Yeah. Which absolutely. one should we go first? Should we try yours first and then one second, what do you think? Alright, sounds good. Or do we pour them both side by side? Oh yeah, so let's, let's, point, let's pour them side by side. Okay, so you pour two and I'll pour two. Yeah, I'm just going to make a bit of a mess with this one because I've still got the... Good carbonation. The three yeah. carbonation drops in, so... Um, How many? Uh, two for this one, um, yeah. and I was doing one for a stubby. And uh, okay, it's coming up with a good head on it. Oh, that's pretty good. Head. Come on, I'm trying to not put beer everywhere. Okay, put that down there. All right. Oh, that's a bit much for you. <coughs> so yeah, we're, I'm, we're trying not to be too uh, generous with the pause. I've, I've got to drive home. That's right. And these these beers are sort of seven and a half. Seven and a half, or a bit more. Yeah, we started ten sixty nine, wasn't it? And we pretty much hit our numbers ten sixty nine, ten yeah. seventy, and then finished out so we're gonna swap. Yeah. So I know. So mine will be in the front for you. Should I put mine in the front there as well? I'm just gonna put this on. Alright, so this is mine. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Colours pretty much identical, yeah. isn't it? It's so, a very deep ruby red, isn't it? So we put a lot this of... is mine? Yes, that's correct. And this is this yours. This is yours? Okay, so yep. mine's on this side. Yeah. We'll keep them that Yeah, one. that's a good way to do it. Perfect. <coughs> mine's clear up, but... I think yours is clear, isn't but it? But to, to be I fair... I can see right through yours. And I only just popped this in the freezer about an hour and a half ago. Okay. Well, um, so also, this has been sitting still in the keg for six weeks, so it's I would really, expect it It's clear. beautifully <laughs> clear. Yeah, really nice. And mine's obviously quite highly carbonated. I think I threw two drops. 
Yeah. And that bottle, which is not a 750, it's about a pint size yeah. bottle. Um, but like, lace things holding up well. Yeah, apart from like, and yours is obviously a little young, so the bubbles are a little bit yeah, a little bit bigger. Yeah. Um, but like color wise, it's a deep ruby red, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, they're pretty spot on in yeah. terms of the same. Yeah. Or you, you expect it to be. Yeah. The same recipe and everything. Let's go for a smell. Okay. Are you gonna my first? Okay. Let's do yours. Nice smell. smell. <coughs> I'm getting a little bit, just a little bit of orange, mm -hmm. but also a big, a nutty um, smell mm. as well, a malty. We used um, quite a few different um, malts too, didn't we? Supernova, mm. uh, Redback Wheat, Shepherd's Delight, Vienna, Vienna and um, American Ale. It's got like almost a spice. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful and smooth. It was a smoother, I think, I shouldn't be get a turn, but um, it's very smooth. Mm. You wouldn't really think of that beer as, you, you, you can definitely taste the malt, it's got full, oh, yeah. big malt body, but you wouldn't think of it as, um, what is it, 70 or 80 IBUs and yeah. 8%. Yeah, Beersmith said it was 95, but I the Whirlpool editions in Beersmith are always a bit mm. way off, because so, okay. we, we dropped it down to... Yeah. Under uh, under eighty degrees before we put the steeping hops in. So yes. Yeah. Theoretically, there shouldn't have been any uh, summarization. Yeah. 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 And we had it with a healthy charge of dry hopping. So I yeah had it with the dry hops and then wrapped it and it sat for quite a few weeks. So uh, possibly lost some of the um, fresh hop character as a result of that. Yeah. My this is. This has died off a tiny bit since it was mm -hmm. fresh. Which is what I was sort of thinking yeah. when I tasted my first time last night. I was thinking, hmm, great, but I think it's going to benefit from that a little bit more age. I often, when, when I'm bottling, I tend to find two weeks in the bottle and then maybe another two weeks yeah. cold um, yeah. in the fridge and it really starts to mm. round off nicely. Okay, let's mm. try, try my one. Mm. Okay. So yeah, slightly. Mm. Not a lot more, more ester, ester mm. coming off yours. Mm-hmm. Could just be the um, extra carbonation. Mm. Yeah, I'm getting more of a... I don't know what, what sort of ester it is. It's like a... Slightly different than temperature too. This is a little bit cold, isn't it? This is yeah. what I actually put in the freezer about 8 o'clock. Um, mm. I'm doing this tasting at... 10 to 10, such as our dedication to the cause. Thank you everyone who watched our videos and was looking forward to the tasting. Of course, Andrew and I were very much looking forward to the tasting. This yeah. could be our last beer in Melbourne for a while. <laughs> yeah, well, Alana was going to try and come. That's right, she that finally was... offered to try and squeeze it in as well, but it, it, was... it was just going to be too hard with a week out for Christmas. So, yeah. thanks Alana, again, Alana, for <coughs> generously popping in while Andrew and I brewed it and also giving us all the tips and advice mm. um, on the formulation and the recipe. That recipe's up on the blog now. Mm. Um, the whole brew day's up on your YouTube uh, stream. Mm. It's had quite a few views, I see. Quite a lot of yeah. comments, which is yeah. great. Yeah, your this yours is um yeah, it's not as it's not as smooth as that. No, it's, it's a bit more resin. It's isn't not it? as sweet. I find mm. yours is mm. the malt characters, but it is it is colder as well. Yeah, mm. but almost tastes a little bit thinner. I think, you know, in terms of points of difference, obviously we brewed on different systems, the other points of difference, Andrew uh, put his straight into, yours straight into a fermentation controlled uh, yeah. temperature fridge. <coughs> and you were pretty quick when you were, you did your primary dry hop and then straight into the yeah, yeah, so you got it off the, the leaves a lot faster. I think I, yeah. um, I did the primary, which also pushed out, I think, to closer to, well, Actually, probably about three weeks. Then dry hopped it, uh, wrapped it, and then it sat for a couple more weeks, waiting for time for me to bottle it. Mm. Um, so mine's had quite a lot of time at a and under those stairs in that warehouse. I reckon it's been semi constant, but it would yeah. be sort of talking you know, fifteen to twenty degrees 
Yeah. Um, so a lot, it hasn't caused irreparable damage to the beer. But no, it's, uh, still, it's, yeah. still, it's still a good beer, yeah. but side yeah. by side, they're clearly different. Mm. Well, I would hazard a guess that. I mean, what's interesting because we have exactly identical um, ingredients, mm. but I've often wondered even if you had two brewers bring exactly identical ingredients and exactly the same equipment, you'll still line them up to be side by side and taste some very subtle differences. <coughs> well, I mean, it's. Yeah, I, I think the big difference here it it has to be because the the systems in terms of the numbers yeah were I mean there was margin of error was them. like yeah. Point yeah. Oh, oh, one yeah difference in IG yeah even with the mess around that we did that's was right tip all the that's right out. yeah that's right but the, when Breaking. I foolishly left the malt pipe down yeah <laughs> but Didn't do that one again <laughs> won't do that again <laughs> but yeah I think uh, the the big difference. Apart from the time, yeah, there's like the the temperature control and I've been reading a little bit about yeah. how it's interesting you talk about that too because Rog put a brew on did a hoppy amber on Thursday which mm. was great. Um, I was just sort of running around the background and I think you know it was Rog's first time brewing on the Robo Brew and he was commenting about how easy it was to use and that's a wonderful thing we've been talking about grandfather's Robo Brews getting people into brewing. Um, but one thing is noticeable is when you go to chill the beer and I think this is some opportunity for improvement in, in a lot of these piece of equipment because I've got a zymatic same issue yeah. um, there's nothing really that gets it down from post boil down to from um, you know sprinkle the yeast and yeah. yeah quickly uh, but I guess you know if you've got a plate chiller and yeah. I noticed when you got fired up your counter flow chiller mm. it really brought it down fast and that uh, yeah faster than uh, so I was using the the immersion or chiller. Or immersion yeah. chiller. Um, I've, been, I've been interested to, uh, I've been reading and hearing a lot of good things about Jaded okay. Brewing yes. in the US. Yes. They're doing immersion chillers which are really good. Ah, uh, yes. Um, but, yeah, yeah. They're in the States. Yes, <laughs> yeah, like a lot of good brewing equipment that comes from the States. $150, States. $160 plus delivery. US, okay, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's one thing that's very clear out there in the market right now is the amount of innovation that's happening in the home brewing space. It's oh, yeah. fantastic. Um, whether it's, you know, coming out of the US, Australia with Gear King or, or other parts of the world, uh, Europe, and uh, they can take things to market so much quicker now with Kickstarters and things like that, but we yeah. still suffer a little bit here in Australia for shipping. Um, we bring in yeast from America, it's expensive. Um, mm. you know, every time we look at equipment from America, it's very expensive. Um, but yeah, and I mean, uh, the good thing is when you think about it, um, what Brown wants to drop around two and a half thousand, then grandfather's sort of chopped the price of that in half, and yeah. now we've got rubber boots chopped the price of that in half, um, yeah. and we're bring, drinking, I think these beers are commercial quality, I'll definitely make sure I drop some in. To allow enough for her to taste and give yeah. feedback, but um, I should have brought an extra bottle. No, no, no that's all right. Yeah, we've um, got plenty of it. Um, and um, yeah, the uh, this is the good thing too is that these wonderful limited edition beers like the Pulp Fiction, they mm. come and they go. Um, people love them. Um, you think, well, how can I get them? Where can I get them? Where you can't. Yeah. So this is a great thing being a home brewer. Yeah, um, just brew it yourself. Yeah, fresh and seasoned oranges off the tree. Um, You've made short work, work of yours after packing all those boxes today. Yeah. <laughs> I was thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, you're, you're, the aroma of yours is now opening up mm. this morning. Yeah, that's a good point too. The other thing that's, I'm, I'm really impressed with both beers is the way the lacing's holding up. Yeah, it's really good. Mm. <clears throat> I think we gladiator in the recipe or not. I always mm. off, quite often cut 5% of gladiator, and I don't think we did um, in this recipe. Or, no, I don't um, think we did either. Mm. But yeah, um, the, um, mm. the aromatics, like the, the citrus, mm. oranges, mm. Mm. Yours, mm. Yeah, mm. I think, um, yeah, I'll uh, knock the nail on the head in m multiple ways with the citra hot, with the um, orange. And we've actually amplified it, haven't we? Because we used orange peel as well. Yeah. Um, and mosaic. And then also what I guess we did, which was slightly different to the original recipe, we really dialed up the redness. So mm. we weren't chasing like a red IPA. It's more like a ruby. Yeah, it's um, more like a brown. Mm, exactly. Yeah. And we used uh, wheat too, um, which is, you know, it's interesting. Your, your beer is just beautifully... Uh, see, see this. Yeah. You mm. see that? Mm. 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 Yeah. 
So this is this is the uh, rubber rubber brew beer. Mm -hmm. Just gonna focus on that. No, no, yeah, no. There it is. Focus on that. And this is the grandfather beer, and you can kind of see. Yeah, that's pretty. It's pretty clear. But this has been in the keg for six weeks, as I said. You did well <laughs> keep it in the keg for six weeks because yeah. I know when um, you were messaging me. <laughs> But just saw it on a keg and I was like, you lucky bugger. <laughs> oh, I was travelling or something and I was like, oh man, can't yeah. wait to get back in. Uh, you're, you're like, that's not going to stay in there. I had a couple of samples just to check. Yeah, the yeah, just check, I'll just check back again. And then I was like, I picked up the keg and I'm like, whoa, I better stop. And do yeah. we've done the taste yeah. tests. Yeah, Because I've had, I've had to blow the keg on. Yeah. Yeah. And have you um, sampled to any friends in that who, um, have anyone, have anyone had, has had a chance to have a taste and what have they fed back? I'm always curious, um, particularly people who don't drink a lot of craft beer or don't drink a lot of homebrew and they you know, yeah I'll give, I'll give that to my uh, brother-in-law fantastic and yeah he was like oh yeah the orange is yeah there but great you know I always there's always the power of suggestion you know you, you tell someone that's orange and they're just looking oh that yeah that's a good table. point yeah but, that's yeah, a good yeah. point um, well, we, when we racked it I know Greg was some at work that day and we um, racked it off and he's like oh I can really smell the, the orange and I think we took out some uh, for a reading and a tasting, um, and he's missed you in the office, he's in, in uh, yeah. UK on holiday. Is there any left? Is there any left? <laughs> he's worried about trying to already. But any left, Greg? So, well, but, um, you know, that's the good thing about these big beers. If you get them right, they can actually, um, you know, velvet sledgehammers. People don't know, you yeah. know the strength, and, and I love introducing people to um, quality beer plus quality homebrew. Um, mm. And... Maybe that's what we can do over the festival season. I might like guinea pig it out to a few people, mm. um, unlabeled, and then just say, "Have a taste. Tell me what you think. What are you What are you tasting?" Um, it's definitely a hoppy beer. I wouldn't. Yeah, say I, I would beer. actually, if I brewed it again, mm. I'd up the dry hop. Ah, uh, yes. I'd double it. It's interesting. Yeah, I reckon because mm -hmm. for me, there's such a big malt. Yes. Oh yeah. It's character. True. It's true. That I reckon it could it could really deal with that mm. Mm. punch. Mm. 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 To really amplify the, the citrus. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I was been listening. I'm thinking one of my next brews, a bottle of pills today is um, a session IPA because I think I gave you that founders um, every all day IPA yeah, to try, yeah, and I've been great. into that for a wee while. Yeah. And um, and then I was listening to Bruce Strong, and they had Jen Telly talking about session beers. Yeah. And what I like about her, she was commenting on one of her recipes that um, she layers in like um, four percent of special B, which is sort of like Gladfield Aurora, you know, like mm -hmm. a melanoid and malt. Um, and just using malt to carry lower ABV beers mm. and give, you know, really good characteristics and then piling the hops in. And she, interestingly too, she wasn't a big one for hop bursting. She still does a bitterness addition at 60 and then, um, you know, some late charges. So yeah. uh, it's a book I think I might have to get myself for Christmas and have a read of it. Um, yeah. This whole session beers thing um, is big. And, uh, you know, when it's hot too, this is a beer I think that would be... Yeah, you'd probably it'd be a great beer to start on, but I don't know if you'd necessarily want to have a whole night on it. No. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's a bit heavy. Yeah. 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 True. Yeah. Like you, you two. Yes. Great, and then, then you yeah. then you go up and get your third, and you're like. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I've yeah. A bit. <laughs> That's right. Or or or, or, an, or an, in, in our case, at the end of a busy week, we might just night off on the couch or mm. something. Um, but you wouldn't certainly um, it's we've delivered in terms of flavour and hitting the punch. Um. <laughs> And I guess the other thing was, you know, in terms of the verdict on the two pieces of equipment, they're both excellent mm. pieces of equipment. It was Christmas yeah. around the corner. I was yeah. I was kind of thinking about that in terms mm. of, like, mm. both beers. I, I'm convinced that any variable is primarily due to fermentation, yeah, the temperature point. control. Mm. Mm. That they're they're mm. close enough, like, mm. that they mm. are different. Mm. And mm. as yours warms, it's mm. becoming more like, more like mine. Yeah. And I was thinking about, you know, if I had my time again, yeah. would I buy the grandfather or would I buy the Robo Brew? Yeah. Uh, and I think, for, for me personally, yeah. I would still go to the grandfather yeah. because the connect control of the, yeah, that the, was the, certainly commu handy. the community and the, um, yeah, the uh, Facebook group. It's the, about the 8,000 members on it. Yeah, it? I know the Robo Brew has one as well, yeah. but also like the... Um, the recipe sharing, mm, mm, you know, which mm, is mm. free and um, yeah. Will you dig in as a brewer? Do you often dig in like what I'm trying to find? Tend to find when I'm 
I'm going to rest when I'm thinking about the session. I'll be I think, okay, well, I'll listen to Jen's podcast with mm. Jamil, and then I'll Google. And of course, the great thing about America, they always give away the whole recipe. Mm. They're, they're very open. And then I'll. New Zealand are getting good for that too. Are they? Got some breweries. Uh, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. So I think it's good that it generally helps, um, you know, uh, encourage people to, you know, brew their beers and pay homage to them. And also, it also um, helps uh, educate the drinkers about the ingredients and, yeah. and you know, what, um, as people become more aware, what hops taste like, what, what malts do this and that. Mm. Um, and then the other thing I'll do is I'll Google some popular beers that I quite like. So I might Google the founders one and look what's in it or Google that and then do a bit of a mishmash of them all together. So I very rarely do I copy someone's recipe 100%. And I yeah. think that's the thing that, you know, when I'm talking yeah. to craft brewers and they seem to think it's the intellectual property is the beer and I'm often thinking it's not really well, the case. No. Yeah, as you said mm. before, like you could give the recipe yes. to, to the exact same recipe, exact same ingredients to yeah. two brew, different brewers. They brew it. Yeah. to the numbers on their system and it'll taste, taste different, different because the, the whole system their systems will be different yeah <coughs> um, yeah I, I, I use the um, the DIY dog oh great um, recipe yeah. for formula, um, yeah. ideas yep that's um, one thing I, I mean we're not really talking about brewing <coughs> software but I've used Brewing Toad in the, in the past and Roger's mm. doing it on Bear Smith Bear Smith is awesome for the technical nature of it, but some of the things, like if you're quickly wanting to pull something together at a good customer of ours, it's called mm. during the week, we're in this recipe, and I could just whack ingredients into brew in about two seconds, and I could all work yeah. out his, his, his IBUs and then talk to him about, oh, you know, the, when they're talking about Whirlpool, add this much at this time, oh, okay, you know, because they were literally brewing. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's quite good to have something that you can just play with. Yeah. Before you plug it in, um, yeah, I find that, yeah, I haven't used Bruto, but mm. uh, it, I know that Beer Smith it doesn't have the all ingredients. Yeah, so, I know yeah. that uh, Beer Smith is not the most user friendly, mm. it, although mm. it's, it's not difficult to use, but no. it, is, it is really in depth and it's, it's super in depth, it's scalable, it? yeah, and, like yeah. you can be a really um, keen uh, home brewer that yes. uses it or, yeah. or a professional brewer, yeah, uh, yeah, like it copes with everything, yeah. yeah. I've now got all all the ingredients that I have. It does my inventory management. Fantastic, yeah. So I, I can pour it all up pretty quick. It's awesome. Yeah, but I'm going to get it right into it. And Brad seems like such a nice guy. Yeah, and he's really yeah. responsive. Too. Yeah, yeah, that's right. If he's yeah. on a couple times for he's, he's a really nice guy. Yeah. His podcast is excellent as well. Mm. Um, big supporter of the industry. Um, I use the app a lot as well. Um, mm. But yeah, I mean, when you think about it now, if we had um, generous craft brewers, each because certainly the commercial brewers in the past never told you what was in their beer, they never wanted to. You know, they had a self-interest, they didn't want to tell you what ingredients were in that case, they wanted to substitute out for cheaper ones. Yeah. Um, dare I say it. Um, craft brewers are always <coughs> communicating through the beer, the ingredients, the quality, the story, mm. videos, things like this. Um, then we've got equipment like the Robo Brew, the Grandfather, mm. places, places like Facebook, YouTube, your videos, things like that, helping people to brew better. And then we've got this incredibly user-friendly software and podcast, mm. there's really no excuse not to start brewing. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a great hobby that you just kind of... It's a bit addictive too, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> start going deeper and deeper in the rabbit hole. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. not start talking sours. No. The other way, you won't be driving your car home or we're out in the shed, grab a couple, bring them in. <laughs> Take two, we thought we'd uh, do this again. Because we uh, we didn't want the soft filter with Vaseline all over the land, so we did. Well, that's not, that's not, sorry about that. Out of focus, <laughs> because we've had a couple of uh, double up games. You were thinking, oh, I'm feeling like Andrew and uh, Dermot after a couple of uh, yeah, pop right. functions. So anyway. <laughs> Why is it a bit hazy? Yeah. <laughs> Unlike the beers. The beers are yeah. clear. Beers are holding up really well. This one's clear. Yours yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, still, um, yeah, it's still slightly more haze. Again, yeah. this one was sitting in the fridge. Yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to watching it unfold over the next while. That's one of the things we could talk about kegs versus bottling. I think kegging hands down is a winner. Um, but one thing about bottling that's really nice is that you can just taste them, you know, like half of them are bottled, say, I don't know, 12 stubbies of rest and, um, and tallies, and you can just taste them over time and then know when they're absolutely at their best. Yeah. And, then, um, and you can obviously, it's good for sharing as well. Yeah, mind you. Gifting. You can do the same thing with the cake. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah no well, point. No, well, well, about that. <laughs> I'm so keen to go kegging. 
can, can you find something. a kegerator at this Christmas? Uh, sold out all around the country. It's crazy. Yes, build a Yes, build yeah. a keezer. <laughs> Maybe that, that would be a good um, one for your brew tube. Oh, yeah. Uh, build your own keezer. Yeah, there's Carl, Carl's the force we were using. Ah, he's yeah. done a good one. Great. Yeah, okay, thanks, Carl. We'll be watching that. Um, YouTube is good. Mm. Um, anyway, so uh, to sum up, I think that uh, both of these beers, um, they're within margin of error, mm. knowing that the fermentation profile was very different. Mm -hmm. um, the, I think, you know, in terms of which system is better, I think mm. they're, uh, they're much the same, as I said before. Uh, I don't know if I'll cut it out or not. Um, the cool one. I don't know, did the, yeah, in terms of, I, I bought the grandfather though before the rubber brew was out. True. And I'd been brewing on a Braumeister yeah. before that. Nice. And I was thinking. I'd be interested in your thoughts on yeah. those two as well. well <laughs> That's well, probably <coughs> a whole nother video. Yeah, but to, the long story short is uh, uh, Beefy, who I started brewing with, John, ah, yeah, John, John Bogan. John Bogan. G'day, he, John. He, he bought a Braumeister. We brewed on that for a year or so, then he moved to Sydney and I'm like, yeah. oh, bugger, I'm going to have to get my own. Yeah, great. And I was, the grandfather just come out and I'm like, yeah. oh, well, this is like two and a half grand. Yeah. And the grandfather's half that. Yeah. And even if it's not great and doesn't last as long, yeah. I can buy two and still be ahead. True. And, true. you know. And you can I, get it there quicker. You know, you're saving for, yeah. for, 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 for less time and you're into brewing on a really good piece of equipment. Yeah, like and that. in terms of like, you can see why the grandfather's half the cost. Because oh, yeah. the, the, the craftsmanship on the brown mice is so, like, it's German. German engineering. And, like every, engineering everything build. just works. Yes, and, yeah. You know, it, but it does have a smaller capacity malt pipe, just like the Robo Brew. Ah, interesting. Um, I think it can only do six kilos. Yeah, um, okay. And so the grandfather was uh, up to eight and a half, nine. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, all the metals, are, you know, the grandfather are thinner and yeah, you know, yeah. the parts aren't, uh, they're not as uh, bespoke. Yeah, it's okay. A, a hoity-toity word. Yes. Um, yeah. So yeah. yeah, you can see where the, the money savings is. Having said that, grandfather still makes great beer. Awesome, and just yeah. the same, like yeah. the Keg King ones, now done the same thing with yeah, grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. It's like... Yeah. Oh, I want a grandfather, but oh, this is half the price. It's I like, know. And it's not half the machine. No, no. I'm 100% with you there. I mean, even like talking it. about the telly there, you know, that's half the price. Yeah. The code <coughs> TV, and it's a flat screen TV that does Android and all the rest of it, to the yeah. previous TV that was 10 years old. You know, and, yeah. um, and uh, you know, the deflation, doesn't matter what you're looking at, whether it's consumer electronics, brewing equipment, it's yeah. its an amazing thing for us as consumers. Yeah. You know, to be brewing on these devices, like you say, we're effectively taking an automated brewing machine from two and a half thousand dollars down to $600. Yeah. 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 And yeah. It's, it, it's, it's a very capable machine. We had issues with the tap. Yes. Jamming up. I don't know. Oh, the pump. Good question on we, that. If we ever got to the bottom of why. Yeah. I wonder if that had something to do with the malt pipe. Me leaving the malt pipe out. Yeah. Um, because when Rog did the brew on Thursday at the warehouse, not a problem. Yeah. Um, just run some cleaning through it today when I was um, mm. uh, in there bottling the pilsner, and yeah, she's running like a charm. So whether you know the the, the sloshing the malt around the grain around something got through yeah. into the pump, um, it did take a bit. Yeah, of it, was, it, was that, it was that tap as well. Um, oh, the tap. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, good front. call, good call. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the other thing too. We did a uh, we did a amber, hobby amber, and, mm. and and we threw things in without a hop sock. And I think you know definitely. Um, but the good thing about that fox bottom. Yeah. Observing the rubber brew this week on Thursday when we um, pulled off into the Venusaurus was um, it, it, all that troop sits on top of it, which yeah. is quite lovely. Yeah. Um, so you do take a clearer beer into your primary. Mm. Um, and I think, you know, like we're saying, the differences between the two beers tonight might be that um, yours was temperature control, one of the five immutable laws of home brewing from John Palmer, yeah. uh, and mine wasn't. It was just fermented on the stairs. But I think the other thing um, we'd be really interested to do an experiment on would be brewing in a plastic bucket. Can we taste the difference between brewing and that uh, conical, like the mm. Fernsaurus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, if we're talking about, like you're saying, when you looked at buying your grandfather versus the Braumeister, and, you know, can I justify that extra expense, or do I want to invest that in a keg rate or some kegs or whatever? Mm. 
likewise, you might be sitting there thinking it's Christmas time. Um, I'm thinking about investing some of my hard earned, or my loved one wants to buy me something to, for mm -hmm. Christmas. Do I get the um, uh, Robo Brew or the Grandfather? Well, I'd be pretty tempted to get the Robo Brew and, and a um, Fermentosaurus. Yeah. You know, that's, uh, they're, yeah. they're like, it's cheap but very functional. Oh, and I know that, good um, quality. Yeah. The Gash has um, uh, yeah. Fermentosaurus and he yeah. really likes it. Um, very hard to find now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I've been hounding my friends um, who make them. They've been a big hit. Yeah, I've, I've seen them. Yeah. I've even seen them going over to people in England and trying to get them out. No, no, no they're, they're oh yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're they're, they're, they're going like, global. It's a big hit, and yeah, I think that's one of the great things too to see that's coming out of Australia is this type of innovation. Yeah. You know, fermentosauruses, robo brews, etc., grandfathers, whatever. Um, yeah. It's good. I'm hoping to have a, a, a play around with uh, the the grandfather conical. Ah, oh, uh, fantastic! Yeah, movie. awesome. So, yeah, I'll look forward to watching that video. Yeah, yeah. so that, that should be fun. Yeah, and what are you thinking of brewing? Beer. No, for your next beer brew. <laughs> Don't uh, know. The, the That's the joy of brewing. The father-in-law's already locked in a Phil's wish, a uh, mm -hmm. a uh, wheat beer, and yeah, a bolted porter. Uh, wheat, wheat beer. And yeah. so I've got three brews. Uh, nice. Down, but I'll probably I want to try and dip my feet into the saison uh, style nice. a bit. Oh, good, and probably another New Zealand pills. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, I mean the interesting thing too, isn't it? Like here we are, it's heat, heat, hot summer. A bottle of New Zealand pills today. I'm really stoked that we have it in the bottles, but it's like um, you know everyone's wanting to brew pills right now, but. We should be brewing it yeah. like two months ago. We should be brewing it, all <laughs> members and uh, things now because, yeah. Um, Maybe the stouts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, you mentioned too about um, the difference in the size of the grain uh, malt pipes. That's mm. important too because, you know, through some friends doing a bulk buy, uh, a lark uh, whiskey barrel, a small barrel, yeah. coming my way, you know, what are we going to put in it? Definitely it's going to be an imperial stout, maybe a maple brown ale, and then another one because there are two of them. And it's like, um, you need that extra capacity yeah. now. If, if you're going to brew a big, heavy beer. a big beer, mm. and big big ABV, yeah. or even if you want to do double batch and yeah. you want to like train eight kilos and then liquor it down True. to fill up two fermenters, yeah. like the grandfather, yeah. that extra is it's probably two to three kilos yeah. extra grain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a big difference. We talked about you know, always yeah. add extract. Well, well these beers are, this is a big, like we just spoke about, a big multi beer, isn't it? We couldn't mm. have brewed that on a um, you know, small standard system. No. no. Um, no. We struggled with the robo. I think we maxed out. Yeah, we brew. maxed out the robo brew. Mm. The efficiency was quite good too, wasn't it? What yeah. did we get for efficiency on these beers? What did you, because you, you obviously had a dog in on your yeah, Bruce Smith, I think Bruce Smith because we had it from, from memory. The, the, the total efficiency was in the high 70s, I yeah, think. great 78 or something like that. Yeah, it? yeah, it's good. I don't know, I might put it put a little post note. Yeah, I, I mean, you must have had it dialed into your Bear Smith because you came to the brew day and then mm. we hit the numbers and we were within 0 0.001. Yeah. And we, I just, I just assumed that the, the Robo Brew was going to be Similar. near enough. Mm. To, to make it not mm. worth mm. worrying about, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's been good. We should uh, we should wrap it up. Yeah. And uh, wish everyone, all your listeners um, and viewers, uh, a very Christmas and a happy new year. <laughs> Big special thanks to you, Andrew, for yeah. uh, putting the project together. We Pleasure. really enjoyed working Thank together. Thank you for uh, agreeing to be part of it. Oh, excellent. Any time. It's good. It's, it's, yeah. I think I think the results. Speak, speak for themselves. themselves. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> you'll be, you're looking at a full glass, shortly they'll be empty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, wishing everyone a safe and happy Christmas, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you in the upcoming videos. Yeah. And, uh, Tune in, this is uh, Andrew from Stasbro. Yeah, and thanks to all the, the new subscribers that I've had over the last couple of months, it's been crazy. I think I've been getting like 100 a month. That's fantastic. Please keep those questions yeah. coming. Um, Andrew's very nice. responsive to them. I enjoyed reading them. And um, the questions around water, I think there was one around water. Mm. Just quickly, I think water chemistry is a, 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 an important part of your brewing process. Um, take it seriously. Um, look up your local water. Um, but there is, you know, there's so much you can learn out there. And, and at the end of the day, you know, just have fun brewing. Yeah. 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 So uh, this is Stas from Stas Brewing. Dermot from Beer Co. Cheers. Thanks, Have everyone. Have a Christmas. Mm. Cheers. Cheers.
Cheers.